Last time, we talked about data sets and visualizing them in 2D and 3D. We ended up with a question. Now that we know how to see our data, how do we figure out what is real? Is that lump a real object, or is it an issue with our data caused by bad C states or faulty equipment? Well, I've got bad news for you. We don't really know. While we can take indirect measurements of depth with our sonar, determining what is real is up for interpretation. This is a result of the inherent uncertainty to our indirect measurements. There isn't any true depth that you can record. Even if we stuck a meter stick down there, there would still be tidal uncertainties, uncertainties associated with the offset between the stick and our center of reference. The list goes on and on. So if our data is so uncertain and we don't directly measure the depth, then how do we know we are doing our jobs right? Well, first we need to be honest about our data. If there is uncertainty, let's define it. If every dot or sounding we collect has an x, y, and z position, let's record the x, y, and z uncertainties for our horizontal and vertical positioning of that sounding. This gets us away from the here is your depth at this point approach towards the here is what we think the depth is and here is how certain we are method. But how do we use that uncertainty? How do we get back to some kind of depth that we can trust? This is when we start talking about models. Models are basically things that combine what we measure into statistical estimates of depth. As anyone who has worked with a sonar knows, our data can be noisy. If we take soundings and record their uncertainties, we can build a bathymetric model that allows us to examine all of our data as a whole and make conclusions as to what the most likely depth is in specific areas. That model will also let us analyze and exclude soundings that are unlikely to be an accurate estimation rather than us manually removing them. This still doesn't get us to the truth, but it does let us draw more informed conclusions. Cube, or the Combined Uncertainty and Bathymetry Estimator, is the algorithm that we use to develop our bathymetry models. Cube builds a network of nodes over the survey area and establishes estimates of depth and depth uncertainty at each node based on the surrounding soundings. They can be placed anywhere, but for efficiency, we generally arrange them in a regular grid over the survey area. When we build a one meter cube surface, we are basically stating that we want nodes spaced one meter apart. Sounding density is important, as the more measurements we combine, the better the statistic. A model built on only a few soundings does not have a lot of strength because the data might be noisy. But a model built with a lot of data is stronger, even when the supporting data is uncertain. You might be thinking, why determine the depth at the node? Why not just pick the most likely sounding, or the one with the lowest uncertainty in each grid square, and call it good? Well, not only would this kill our data density, but it would be disingenuous. It would imply that the least uncertain sounding represents the truth for that whole area. Even uncertain soundings have important information that we can use. It's much more useful to try and estimate the depth at any point in the grid by using the uncertainties and depths of the surrounding soundings. The depth of the node represents our best understanding of the depth in that area. The uncertainty of the node represents our confidence in the depth estimate for that area. How Cube does this is easy to understand in a simplified way and difficult to understand in total. Let's stick with the simplified explanation for now. Take a grid node and capture all the soundings within a certain radius from the node. Soundings further away from the node are weighed less when making the depth estimate, but all of these soundings are sorted into groups, so that the soundings in each group have similar depths but are different from other groups. These different groups are called hypotheses, as in guesses for the depth. Cube then chooses what looks like the best hypothesis based on the amount and quality of the data in each group where the assumption is that the sea floor will have the best and most populous group. The combined uncertainty of the soundings in that group become the depth uncertainty for the node. Take a grid built up from these nodes and you get what we call a cube surface. Remember though, it is a model and models are not truth. There will be times when it's wrong, such as when it selects a noise hypothesis by mistake. The advantage to building a cube surface is that you no longer have to identify the perfect sounding. You just have to clean out the soundings that are found to result in an unwanted cube hypothesis. It basically automates a lot of manual cleaning you would have to do without it. By building a product, you only have to spot check for obvious issues. And it does it in an intelligent way, by assessing the uncertainty of the sounding 
instead of trying to make a point cloud that looks good to the operator.